the floor is all yours. Thanks. Um, so my question would be, if you think about fintechs, we, we talked about whether there, or there is this trade-off between innovation and more regulation. So if there's less uh, regulation, there might be more innovation because it's easier to start a fintech, for instance, or a company in general. And I was wondering, if you look back at the last financial crisis, I think from now we would all say, well, there were a couple of factors that were really the risk points about it. Like you could say, well, for instance, uh, rating agencies didn't do their job or like CDOs were a bad thing because they were intransparent and so on. What would you say, and I think this question goes, goes to all of you, um, what would you think are the real risk factors of FinTech where you would say in five years we all knew about it? Who wants to start? Easy question. Predict yeah. five years. <laughs> <laughs> Not an easy one, but maybe um, with some evidence, uh, fintech, um, it's IT security. IT security could be uh, could turn out to be really uh, an issue because uh, if if the business model is really based on technology, then you need to have uh, good security systems for for your te technology. Um, and I think the regulator um, has already initiated a process to, to increase um, the security uh, measures in, in the financial sector. Um, but I think they are, th 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 this will further develop and there's definitely a need to develop further. Very good point. I have a weird response, which is I... I uh, am puzzled about how artificial intelligence and fintech are going to interact. And if I had a crystal ball and could see just one thing that in, in the fintech space, that is, that would be it. So uh, it, it remains to be seen how that will evolve. Um, I would say the risk probably lies more on the technology than in the fintech in the business itself. So I would totally agree with you. I would say cyber. Security is one of the major challenges, and maybe um, I could I could think of um, ways um, how to outsource certain processes and uh, how they are interconnected and how so how is risk shared over certain distributors, technology businesses cooperating less or more. Um, j just to add, uh, no, I wasn't wasn't asked, but um, I think I would put. Uh, well, I, I think I think uh, I think I would put some money on securitization because I think that's a little it's a little uh, thrilling what's what's going on. I mean, it's a little little frightening the amounts of money that that are being securitized again, um, and with, with with very dubious incentive structures. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we had a securitization bubble. We have been talking a lot about fintech uh, today. We have been talking a bit about banks, but uh, I think there's a third group of players which are the big actors of the digital. So GAFA or also uh, telecommunication companies. In France, for instance, uh, Orange started a new bank, Banque Orange, that uh, just started this year and then they're planning to expand in Belgium and in Spain. Uh, they're offering uh, accounts, banking accounts now to their members and uh, one may think that they have quite a lot of information about their members that banks perhaps do not have. So uh, my question is, is there a space for these large digital players also next to fintechs and, uh, and traditional banks? Well, uh, I definitely think there's a room for, for those uh, players and um, Maybe you also refer to, to, to Facebook or uh, this kind of, of player. Uh, and that is a, a big issue for the banks. They are a little bit frightened uh, from my perception that um, they come to the idea or they really realize the idea to, to set up a bank and um, to, to offer all their uh, billions of, of users their banking products. So if uh, this will, will happen, then uh, I think that that may have a, distru a disruptive uh, effect for, for the banking uh, industry. And maybe the reason that they haven't done yet is um, that they are not really 
keen to, to give the full transparency and to be subject to all the um, regulatory requirements with regard to um, data security and uh, transparency um, as, as banks have to, to, uh, to meet. We've been talking about so far, but I brought one question which I would have maybe asked if I uh, would have been sitting there. So I wanted, would, would like to know how you personally use well, the, the services of fintechs and how this changed in the past years, how your openness towards new services changed and if you became well, more open and more, exp if you like to experiment with new services without knowing so much about them maybe. Yes, I, t I tried it once in a while, but it's not that I spent all my, my, my time um, with uh, trying out new fintech products. Um, but I'm very curious and I find it quite interesting what is on the market to see, um, and especially when it comes to mobile application, which is so handy and useful. Um, and I figure out for myself, personally, that I'm not really afraid of using that, them. Um, which mean maybe that I'm a little less uh, averse, risk averse than the normal regulator. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. um, personally, um, I have to admit that I um, uh, quite seldomly uh, have made use of any fintech uh, products. Um, I'm, I think, the last user of BlackBerry in our firm. Uh, the, the remaining uh, staff all use. Um, um, Apple, um, iPhone. Um, so if I need it for, for business purposes, then I ask my wife if I can try how uh, the, the testing phase, uh, how, how it works. But personally, um, I do only online banking, which is not really fintech, um, I have to admit. So uh, I love anything that saves time. So uh, payment systems, you know, ease in uh, sending payment to people is perhaps the most common thing that uh, we use in our household. Although I uh, uh, hate to can sit, hate to say it, but I confess, I often delegate this stuff to my better half to figure out how to use these things because there are learning curves to doing it. Uh, so, but it's uh, you know really anything that saves time is is brilliant. Okay, so if, if there is really no more question, three, two, okay. That's called loss aversion, by the way. <laughs> loss aversion. No, I got inspired uh, because we talked about our personal uh, experience by using fintech services. I've uh, come to Berlin for two reasons. Uh, first of all, I wanted to attend the conference, okay? And the second reason is uh, I've read and I've learned here some restaurants in Berlin where you can uh, pay for a meal uh, in Bitcoin. Mm. I'm very eager to do so. My wife told me we're all very related to our wives, so we also learned uh, to uh, other speakers. And now my wife said to me, now you must be crazy. Maybe you can pay uh, your cup of coffee uh, in Bitcoin, but uh, if you would go tomorrow to Berlin, you would also get a pizza for for the same amount and uh, so this uh, refers to the questions uh, to cryptocurrencies and their role in uh, daily use in daily business of course cryptocurrencies are very important when it comes to speculation uh, currently in our law firm we are advising on cryptocurrency funds and uh, we have to say the dialogue with BaFin is very fruitful and it's a real pleasure you know, they're qualified as financial instruments and it is very clear from a regulatory perspective, not so much clear from a tax perspective. And, uh, well, however, and the family offices, they are very eager to make use of this new vehicle uh, because, uh, of course, real estate, uh, securities, these investments are not so interesting in those days. But also when it comes to security and when uh, it comes to the question to the future role of uh, cryptocurrencies. And I think my guess is it's going to be a, a real task uh, to free them from the fate of being an object of speculation and to enter into the real business world. Do you agree? Who wants to go first? Well, Doug, I, maybe? I can, you know, I can re-echo what I had up on the slide with China banning Bitcoin, and you saw uh, the tremendous change in where those currencies are traded, uh, uh, and and the price. I mean, just so drastic. Picture tells a thousand words. So, 
you know, the, uh, there's tremendous uh, risk, not just in speculators and the like, but also regulatory risks associated with Bitcoin. Um, uh, would I, you know, want to use that myself to pay at a restaurant? Um, probably not. I hate to say it. I, I agree with your uh, position. It's difficult and um, I think we will see uh, more regulation on virtual currencies. I mean, uh, EBA is working on it, ESMA is working on it, uh, the German regulator is working on it, though it's just a matter of time that uh, something something else um, will, will come in, in this regard. And um, I think today or yesterday um, I, I read a press release that ECB also um, considers taking actions against ICOs, which is at the end of the day a uh, sort of um, a blockchain um, a based uh, Bitcoin related uh, product. I forgot to add, I just saw a news story, there are two frauds with uh, initial coin offerings in the US that the SEC has uh, uncovered, so just recently. So, so it's a Um, uh, it's a bit fake question. Um, a lot of the companies that's related to it, the internet have this monopolistic tendency. Uh, talk about Facebook, Amazon, or any successful business that's based on internet has this monopolistic tendency. And now that we're thinking about fintech and um, this, uh, which is primarily, I guess, internet based uh, businesses, uh, what is the risk, oh, sorry, what is the risk of um, uh, the, uh, having these global monopolies that come out of, uh, that come out of this and is that actually a problem? Is that, can that be regulated? Uh, from what we see f uh, generally, talk about Facebook, Amazon, you can't really break these companies now and is that a risk that fintech uh, industry also says? Um, maybe I can start from the regulatory perspective or um, what conclusion one could draw from what you said is, of course, the scaling up effect um, is much important for, or is um, uh, um, important for every business uh, and that is why there comes, uh, there we come to the European legislator. Um, we see uh, a single, a single uh, financial market, um, especially when it comes to digitalization, is very important because then you have not only the German market or the French market, you have a European market and that is something you need as a business um, to somehow be able to, s to scale up in a, a bit bigger at least. But I think, it, at least at this stage, it's, it's, it's too early to uh, think of the problems of um, or w w what you uh, touch upon. Um, r right now, we have so many fintech players. Um, it's a luxury problem, so to speak, yeah, if, we, if we reach uh, this uh, stage. Yeah, I have uh, similar sentiments. The one thing that's going to be fun to see going forward is just the extent to which uh, those firms innovate, acquire competitors, expand their uh, scope of things that they do. I've heard people talk about all sorts of things like Facebook banks, uh, the, these types of things going forward. So it'll be fun and exciting to see what, uh, what they bring forward and what comes in the future. Uh, uh, latest one in the news I saw is a Google Ear Translator. Uh, so if we had them, we could all be speaking our own language and no problem. Apparently that's on the market already. Uh, so lots of new sort of crazy things that'll change the way everybody interacts with each other. All right, then <clears throat> let me make use of the tendency of loss aversion again. So really no more questions. Three, two, one. Then this concludes our conference, our fifth um, fintech uh, crowd investing symposium with the topic of fintech regulation. Um, on behalf of, of all the staff of, of Lars Hornhoff uh, and myself, uh, let me say thank you again. Um, um, it was wonderful. Thanks to all the, the panelists, to all the speakers, um, and, and have a safe trip home if, if you have to go back home. Bye bye. <laughs>